You might not know this, but there is this man in history whose wealth is beyond the wildest imagination. I mean, we are talking about a fortune so enormous that even the likes of Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk can't even compete. Some economists estimate his wealth to be over a mind-boggling $400 billion. Let me emphasize, that's just an estimate. Now you might be wondering who in history could amass such wealth. Hold your breath because it's none other than Mansa Musa, the legendary king of the kingdom of Mali. But here's a twist. What happened to his wealth after his death? If he was so incredibly rich, shouldn't there be some evidence of it today? These burning questions have been consuming my thoughts lately, so I decided to dive into the mystery and uncover the truth. This is the story of betrayal, envy, greed, struggle, and the loss of the once mighty empire. So make sure to stick around to the end of this video to unravel the fascinating journey of Mansa Musa's wealth. Now before we delve into this captivating tale of Mansa Musa's wealth, I'd like to kindly request for your support by subscribing to this channel if you have a deep passion for history. Don't forget to give this video the thumbs up and share it with others so we can share the knowledge far and wide. Thank you for your support. Now, let's begin this journey by getting acquainted with the remarkable figure of Mansa Musa. Born in the kingdom of Mali, Mansa Musa ascended the throne in the year 1312 CE. His rise to power came about after the mysterious disappearance of the previous king, Abu Bakr II, who ventured into the Atlantic Ocean with a grand fleet of ships but never returned. It's worth noting that Mansa Abu Bakr II was preceded by another extinct ruler named Mansa Marajata I, who laid the foundation for the kingdom's prosperity. When Mansa Musa came to power, the kingdom was already blessed with riches and we are not talking about a small area here. We are talking about a kingdom that spanned across multiple countries in West Africa. We are talking Mali, Senegal, the Gambia, Guinea, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Mauritania and Burkina Faso. And he didn't just sit down and enjoy the existing world. He took it upon himself to elevate his kingdom to even greater heights of prosperity. He is hailed as the mastermind behind the economic boom that made Mali the wealthiest kingdom in West Africa during his reign. Masamusa had big plans for his cities. He transformed places like Timbuktu and Gao into thriving cultural hubs. And how did he do that? By bringing in talented architects from the Middle East and various parts of Africa to design magnificent buildings that would put Mali on the map as a center of learning and sophistication. Let's talk about the event that truly put Mansa Musa on the spotlight. His legendary pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324 CE. This wasn't your average pilgrimage. Mansa Musa embarked on this journey with an entourage of tens of thousands of people in a caravan of camels landing with a jaw-dropping amount of gold. Can you believe it? Each camel carried a whopping 300 pounds of gold. The impact of this pilgrimage was felt far and wide, and as he passed through Egypt, the sheer amount of gold he brought caused the value of this precious metal to plummet for a staggering 12 years. News of this incredible display of wealth even reached Europe, giving birth to this iconic image. It's fascinating to see how the kingdom reached its peak during his reign, which continued even after his passing in 1337 CE. However, as we already know, every kingdom eventually comes to an end. And in the case of Mali, it was succeeded by the Songhai Empire, which marked another significant era in African history. So, what happened to Mansa Musa's wealth after he died? Considering his lavish buildings and the prosperity he brought to Mali, it's reasonable to explore what transpired in the kingdom following his demise. After Mansa Musa's reign, his son, Mansa Maga I, took over the kingdom of Mali. Interestingly, not much is known about this Mansa, except that he came to power at the height of the kingdom's glory. Unfortunately, his reign was short-lived as he passed away unexpectedly in 1341 CE. This created the perfect opportunity for Suleiman, Mansa Musa's brother, to step in and claim the throne, which led to a sort of power struggle within the royal family. The sudden death of Mansa Maga has led historians to believe that his uncle may have played a role in his demise, seizing the opportunity to take control of the kingdom. With the benefit of hindsight, we can see that this marked the beginning of the empire's decline. Mansa Suleiman, on the other hand, was a powerful ruler. He expanded the kingdom's territories 
Proof conquest and worked to establish Islam as a dominant religion within his dominion. However, such conquest required significant resources and it exerted a strain on the empire's wealth and stability. So while Mansa Musa was busy conquering new territories, he had to deal with multiple attempts from members of his own court who wanted to overthrow him. Despite these challenges, he managed to hold on to power for 24 years. But when he passed away, his son, Kaza took over as the ruler of the empire. And once again, Kaza's rule was short-lived. Just a few months in his rule, a civil war erupted between the house of Mansa Musa and the house of Mansa Suleiman. On one side, Maga's son, Marijeta, fought for Mansa Musa's house. While on the other side, Kaza fought for Mansa Suleiman's house. It's worth noting that Mansa Marijeta was one of the individuals who previously tried to overthrow Mansa Suleiman. So it's not surprising that he aimed to claim the throne from Kaza. After a mere nine months, Kaza was overthrown by Marijeta, who became known as Marijeta II. However, desiring the throne doesn't guarantee effective rule. Mansa Marijeta is remembered as a wasteful and tyrannical ruler. He oppressed the people depleted the national treasury and even made the questionable decision to sell a boulder of gold, one of Mali's national treasures, for far less than its actual value. It was during his reign that the wealth of the kingdom started to vanish, leading to the decline of the Mali Empire. To make matters worse, Master Marajata II fell ill with a sleeping disease that left him immobile for two years. After a total of 14 years as the leader, he passed away in either 1373 or 1374, leaving the kingdom in a significantly worse state than before. His son Musa took the throne after his father's death. So after the disastrous reign of Masa Marajata II, his son Masa Musa II tried to distance himself from his father's rule and aimed to be a more just ruler. However, he proved to be a weak king and didn't actively involve himself in the affairs of the kingdom. Instead, he entrusted the governors to his chief ministers and officials. With a weak king essentially serving as a figurehead, it was up to the chief minister and officials to steer the kingdom back on track. They managed to do so, albeit barely. During Mansa Musa II's reign, the person in charge was Sandiki, his high counselor. He took charge and launched military campaigns to quell rebellions in the eastern part of the empire. The outcome of these campaigns were mixed, and Sandiki even went as far as imprisoning Mansa Musa II when he attempted to regain control. Mansa Musa II ruled for a total of 14 years, and upon his death, his brother, Mansa Maga II, assumed the throne of the kingdom. However, similar to his brother, Masa Maga was merely a figurehead. In this case, Sandaki seized the opportunity and killed Manga II, taking the throne for himself within a year of Maga's brief rule. It's worth noting that Sandaki had no family ties to the royal family, but by this point in history, Mali was already losing its grip on its many territories. So to establish some legitimacy, Sandeki married Mansa Marijeta II's wife. He managed to hold on the kingdom together for a short period of time, but the decline of Mali was already well underway. Just within two years of Sandeki's rule, he was killed by Manga III, who later became known as Mahmud I, and every Mansa after him attempted to restore the empire to its former glory. For almost a century following the empire's peak, the Mansas had to contend with rebellions within various parts of their kingdom, loss of control over the gold mines, and numerous invasions from both the north and the south. All these factors played a significant role in the downfall of Mali. While some Mansas managed to maintain a semblance of control over the kingdom, others failed miserably. Sadly, the golden age of the Mali Empire had come to an end and could never be reclaimed. This brings us back to Mansa Musa I. As we've observed, right after his death, a battle for succession ensued, setting the stage for further challenges and changes within the kingdom. So Mansa Musa's brother, Suleiman, took the kingdom to even greater heights. However, when Mansa Marijeta II ascended the throne, Things took a turn for the worse. His reign depleted much of the kingdom's wealth in just one generation. The battle for succession only added to the kingdom's problems. Unfortunately, the Mali Empire never fully recovered from the reign of Mansa Marijeta II. Several decades later, the empire faced a formidable opponent in the Songhai Empire and was ultimately defeated, marking the end of one of the greatest empires in West Africa's history. 
Mansa Musa, as a powerful king, made a significant impact in history. His pilgrimage to Mecca inadvertently showcased the immense riches he controlled, which ultimately attracted European exploration into West Africa. This, in turn, may have played a role in the emergence of the transatlantic slave trade, but that's a topic for another video. And that concludes our journey into what happened to Masses Musa's wealth after his death. If there is one thing we've learned from this research, is that wasteful and tyrannical rulers are not suitable for governing a thriving empire. Thank you for joining me on this exploration. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.